everyone welcome back to today's video as a continuation to the topic on electrical energy sources today we're going to discuss dependent sources now dependent sources are actually electrical components whose output is determined by the current or the voltage of another element in the circuit we know that a source could be either a voltage source or a current source so how are the dependent sources different from the independent sources the parameter which controls these sources right so for example if i have a voltage source whether it is controlled by the voltage across another element in the circuit or it is controlled by a current flowing through another element in the circuit so that will depend the kind of dependent source this is so in that way we have two types of dependent sources now so we could either have a current controlled source or a voltage controlled source now when i talk about a source source could as you can see here be of two types so that leads us to a combination of four such types right so we can have a current controlled voltage source a current controlled current source a voltage controlled voltage source and a voltage controlled current source so these are the symbols uh, that could be used to represent uh, these dependent sources in a circuit so this is a voltage controlled voltage source so how is it a voltage source that you can see uh, looking at the plus and minus symbol which is similar to the symbol which we use to represent a normal independent voltage source so this is a voltage source but what is the parameter which controls it that will be understood by the expression which is written next to the source so if it is going to be say k times vx where vx is the voltage drop across an element say rx in the circuit so this voltage source will depend upon the voltage drop across the element rx in the circuit and the k1 could be some constant for example if the voltage drop across the element rx is say 2 volts and the constant k1 here is say 3 and then we can say that this voltage dependent source's voltage would be 3 times of vx where vx is 2 volts which is 6 volts so on and so forth right so we can look at the uh, volt uh, current controlled voltage source here wherein we see that the parameter which controls the voltage is the current flowing through some element say rx similarly these are actually representing the current sources now the current that comes out of this current source that could be controlled by the voltage across some element say rx and if it is a current controlled current source then the parameter could be the controlling parameter or the controlling current could be the current flowing through some element say rx so how is it going to be used in a circuit and how is it ever going to be possible to simplify such a circuit well it's not that difficult let's look at the example of application of kvl with dependent sources in it so this is a simple circuit say so here see we can uh, make the difference make out the difference between the uh, dependent and the independent voltage source here so here this is the independent voltage source whose value is 33 volts whereas here this is a dependent voltage source now what kind of voltage uh, uh, dependent voltage source is this so this is a voltage controlled voltage source so the controlling parameter here is vx now vx is nothing but the drop across this 20 ohm resistor so the voltage drop across this 20 ohm resistor is going to control the voltage uh, that is going to be sourced by this dependent voltage source so how do we analyze this circuit so the problem here says that we need to find the values of uh, vx and the value of v not where v not is the voltage drop across this resistance uh, of 10 ohms 
So consider that this voltage source is providing that the independent voltage source V1 is providing a current of say I. So that current I is going to uh, flow through R1. Uh, consider that it is also the current that is flowing through uh, R2 over here. So this being a plus and a minus because this is the direction in which the current is entering uh, at this terminal and leaving at this terminal. So we need to find out Vx and V0 from this circuit. So we are going to apply the KVL. So the first step is to mark the uh, plus and minus signs uh, in order to understand the uh, direction of voltage drops across these resistors. And we, we know that it is going to be pointing from plus to minus. So for this uh, dependent source, the direction is in this manner. For V0, V0 is going to be like that. For the independent source, the direction is in this manner. The second step is to assume an arbitrary uh, drop direction in the circuit. The third step is to compare the arrows and decide the signs of these voltage drops and frame the KVL equation. So here we will be begin with the uh, independent voltage source. So this arrow is facing downwards whereas the arrow that we have considered in the clockwise direction is actually facing in the upward direction. So they oppose each other so that would make it minus 33. Then Let's look at Vx. The direction of Vx drop and the direction uh, that we have considered in the clockwise direction are same. So therefore plus Vx. Then the direction of this dependent uh, voltage source value and the direction that we've considered is also matching. So again plus 4Vx. Uh, then again here plus V0. All this put together should be equal to 0. So I can rewrite this equation as Vx plus 4Vx that would make it 5Vx plus V0 is equal to 33. So this is one equation. Now since we need to find out Vx and V0 let us write the expression for Vx and V0 in terms of I. So from Ohm's law we know that Vx is going to be 20 into i and v0 is going to be 10 into i. So now let us replace the values of vx and v0 in equation 1 with these values in terms of i. So then we get 5 into 20i plus v0 is again 10i is equal to 33. So that makes it 110i is equal to 33. So we can actually get the value of i as 0 0.3 amps. So now that we know the value of i, we can replace the value of i in these two equations. Let me call it equation 2 and equation 3 to find out the value of vx and v0. So vx therefore becomes... 20 into 0 0.3 volts, which is nothing but 6 volts. And V0 is 10 into 0 0.3 volts, which is again nothing but 3 volts. So there now we have actually simplified the circuit with a dependent source by using the KVL concept. Now, this is an example of application of KCL with a dependent source. So over here, uh, we have we can identify the sources here. So this one is the independent current source. And this one is the dependent current source represented with the rhombus sign and the arrow. The arrow shows that this is a current source. Now, what kind of current source is it? Look at the value written next to it. It is Ix by 4. So which means that the current coming out of this current source, dependent current source is controlled by the current Ix which is flowing through another element. So that particular element is actually 2 ohms as given in this circuit. So this becomes therefore a current controlled current source. Now as we apply KCL usually, let's say this is my node, let's identify the nodes first right. So this is the node here. 
there's only one node because all of these are connected to this particular node there are no components in these two wires so that's node n1 and this is node n2 uh, which is generally considered to be grounded so now applying kcl at n1 so what do we get so there is a six amps that is entering this node n1 from this current source the independent current source then we have ix which is coming down into the two ohms we have ix by 4 which is the value of the current of the dependent current source and let us consider that this is say current uh, i1 and assume that the voltage drop over here is say uh, i'll call it v1 so now we know the currents that are entering and leaving nodes N1. So the current entering node N1 is plus 6. The currents leaving node N1 is minus Ix, minus Ix by 4 and minus I1. So all this put together is going to be equal to 0. That is what the KCL law says. Right? So now... Uh, how do we simplify this equation? We have two unknowns over here. So let us look at the circuit a little closely. If we see the 2 ohms resistor and the 8 ohms resistor are actually in parallel to each other, which means what? The voltage drop across the 2 ohms resistor and the 8 ohms resistor is going to be equal. So since I've marked V1 across 8 ohms, I can write V1 to be equal to 8 into I1 according to Ohm's law. Now, since the voltage drop across 8 ohms and 2 ohms is going to be the same, I can also say that the drop across the 2 ohms is also V1. So, according to that, can I say that V1 is also going to be equal to 2 times of Ix. So, now we can have establish a relationship between i1 and ix so we know that 2 i1 uh, sorry 2 ix is equal to 8 i1 so that makes it ix is equal to 4 times of i1 so i have an equation over here if i call this as the first equation this as my second this as the third then this would be my fourth equation so if I substitute equation 4 in my first, then I can actually get the entire equation in terms of I1. So let me uh, replace it 6 minus 4I1 minus 4I1 by 4 minus I1 is equal to 0, which can be written as so minus 4i1 minus i1 minus i1 so that makes it minus 6i1 so 6 is equal to uh, 6i1 therefore i1 is equal to 1 amps so if i1 is equal to 1 amps then what is ix ix is equal to 4 into 1 which is 4 amps so in this manner we have been able to find out the value of current flowing through the 2 ohms as well as the 8 ohms resistor we also know that this current source value now is nothing but ix by 4 and therefore again it is 1 amps so we have now applied the concept of kcl uh, to solve this problem which consists a current controlled current source I hope this video on KCL and KVL with dependent sources was useful to you. Uh, please do subscribe to my channel to continue watching more concepts on circuit theory, uh, which would help you in uh, solving uh, gate problems too. Thank you.